Welcome to the FilmFX 504 update highlights. In this build we'll solve some bugs and also added new features. First of all and the most important the GPU viewport bug that caused uh, non-functioning after some time has been resolved. Also another update is the 3ds Max 2020.1 update uh, detachable viewports support. So if we enable the GPU viewport display in FumeFX, uh, it's locked to a particular viewport and with the auto viewport switch it will move uh, from viewport to viewport as we select, select viewports. So how to make it work with detachable 3 d Studio Max viewports. So we're going to float one viewport and since we have auto switch viewport it switched to the floater but if we go back it will switch back to the old viewport so let make it let me let make it show on this viewport and deselect auto switch viewport and we can have the voxel data display in any other viewport in 3ds max while we keep the GPU viewport enabled in the floating viewport. To have the FilmFX cast shadows on another objects you will have to enable occlusions of course. Another great thing that we've added to the FilmFX is the parameter check option that quickly goes through all the parameters and extracts only those where parameters were changed from their default values. In this column you can see the current value and this is what is the parameter default value. Of course you can copy this to the clipboard and we can paste it to the notepad. You can also save this to the grid description and it will be saved along with the, with the file. So whenever you load any tutorial or another scene from some other person you can go to the parameter check and see what parameters they have change for this particular simulation. Another great update that we have added is the a little bit cleaner layout of the simulation world. It's divided into solver, advection system and turbulent noise section. For the turbulent noise we have added effect, effect velocity magnitude option which means that this turbulence noise will affect only the velocity magnitude that's inside the grid as opposed uh, previous uh, mode of operation was that the turbulence noise was added in all directions to the to the velocity grid here is a comparison for the different modes and you can see that velocity enabled uh, remains the shape of the basic uh, simulation without turbulence more closely than with uh, velocity magnitude <coughs> disabled. We also added small detail scale and small detail amount options. Please keep, keep in mind that those parameters work only if we have at least two or more noise levels. For this purpose we will have set this to four and detail scale, small detail scale means that all the finer and finer noise levels will have smaller scale and it will be a little bit more detailed. And small detail amount actually increases or decreases the small detail influence to the overall noise 
look so we can put this to default and another usual option is that we added to the noise preview are those small ticks that you see at the bottom those ticks displays actual voxel size so this is one voxel this is another voxel so you see that this noise in relation to the voxel voxel size if you click once on the this window you will see rasterized noise this is the way the voxel flow sees your noise so with two levels you get pretty random noise another good addition is the fume effects wind we've added the noise display to the fume effects wind and also you can now have more levels and you can visualize this wind so if you have for example turbulence 3 you can visualize how it's going to look in the in the viewport another addition is uh, type flow particle bug fixes mostly and some improvements so basically here is how would you pick a type flow particle system from inside film effects particle source okay for the caching make sure that you export velocity that's important for the film effects and you'll have to enable particle interface if you if you didn't enable particle interface you won't be able to pick type flow from the film effects particle source enable particle interface and you simply pick type flow from the list of objects and once you run the simulation you will see that FumeFX will generate smoke or fire whatever your setup is depending on the type of particle systems thank you for watching see you soon for the next tutorial